Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Dr. Portland Jones and I'm here with Claire Juton in the first of our Pony Club at Home series. Now, Claire is a very successful event rider. She grew up in Dubai, in the UAE, where she first picked up horse riding. She relocated to the UK when she was 16 years old with a dream to become an event rider. Claire studied at Hartbury College where she completed her Bachelor of Science with honours in equine science. She has competed successfully up to CCI three star. So thanks so much for joining us today, Claire. I'm really looking forward to finding out a bit more information about you. So can you tell us um, exactly how and where you started horse riding? So the dream started in Dubai, as you mentioned, at probably about the age of six to eight. Um, I started riding at a big equestrian establishment, establishment called Dubai Equestrian Centre. And then I quite quickly moved to what you'd call a smaller yard on the outskirts of Dubai in a place called Jibbal Ali, which was very much more hands-on and I had my own horse on loan and then very quickly I ended up having my own horse. And then I discovered Hartbury College. So from the age of 11, that was my dream to go to Hartbury and ride around Gatcombe. And it's just gone from there, really. <laughs> and so how did you get to where you are today from, from that kid that had a dream? To, to you so, to today? A lot of tears, a lot of hard work <laughs> and quite a few smiles thankfully. Um, so hard work literally that's I mean you cannot do this job unless you are prepared to put blood and sweat into it because it is literally like so demanding. So I basically was very lucky that I um, met David Green Lucinda Green's former husband who is now in Australia and he kind of took me under his wing and I was based with him for, for I think about five six years he used to come and pick me up from Hartbury take me back to his base in Swindon and I'd spend all my summers there all my Easter's there and every single moment I could get there I was there um Jackie Green who was his partner at the time was an absolute rock she basically just taught me all the all the like ropes really and I spent quite a bit of time with Sammy Birch another Australian rider and also Janelle and Tim Price who were actually based there and that's kind of how it all started I then obviously was trying to ride horses and study and make mum and dad happy that I was actually <laughs> studying so I sort of fell into starting up my own yard really about 10 minutes from where I'm based now and thankfully I got the ride on a few really good horses and it sort of has gone from there really unfortunately when you rent places you end up moving around quite a lot so I have had quite a few yard moves you know you lose horses you gain horses but I think like to think now I've got the most amazing team I've ever had and some seriously supportive owners and I mean they are your backbone your owners like you can't do it without them so yeah that's where I am now. <laughs> I understand that Pony Club featured in your sort of learning journey when you were learning to ride? Yeah so there is a Pony there was a Pony Club set up in Dubai to which I god it's a long time ago now now I need to remember um I did do quite a few Pony Club camps to which are very different to your pony club camps over here having taught at quite a few pony club camps over here what i experienced as pony club in dubai was very different we lived in you know sort of like what you'd call proper grooms accommodation you know like almost like university studios sort of flats really and because of the heat you were obviously sort of limited to what you could do and we certainly didn't do all the pony club games and things like that that I have done with the kids when I've taught here. Um, but I mean, pony club over here in the UK is huge, like absolutely huge. And I think it's something that Dubai lacked at the time. And hopefully they're starting to pick up a lot more on and go down that route a lot more now, which I think they are. Yeah, okay. Um, and what about Pony Club in the UK? You said you've been involved teaching over in the UK at Pony Club and stuff? Yeah, for I think for about three or four years I taught camp 
every, you can see the dog in the background. <laughs> for about three or four years, I, I taught at, at camp every single summer. Um, and I suppose the busier I got, I, I just wasn't able to do that as much, really. Um, but I really enjoyed it. And there's a really nice bunch of kids here. And, it, you know, it is... I mean, Pony Club Camp is huge. They are, all the different pony clubs hold their own one-day events. They hold their own an awful lot of training days. But we also have over here what you call your riding clubs as well, which are basically like what your pony club members go on to be a, a member of once they leave pony club. Yeah. And so they tend to be the older generation. And I t teach them a little bit now. I think that's just as my career's progressed i've ended up teaching the older ones more i suppose um but as far as local pony clubs to me i think i'd say there's probably four or five. Oh, that's fantastic um yeah so everybody makes mistakes in their careers and um sometimes you know i think if you the right kind of attitude they tend to be good lessons don't they what was the biggest mistake you made and what did it teach you i'd probably say never take anything for granted you know sometimes you think things are better you know or you can get jealous of other people's horses and stuff but in yeah. this sport you've got to work with what you've got and sometimes your team of horses might not be as good as you would quite like, as you quite would have dreamt of. Um, but yeah, so that would be my biggest thing. Don't take anything for granted and just make sure you always push yourself. You know, there'll be times when I think, especially in the winter months here, you go, oh gosh. And it's just finding that motivation, which I think gives you that extra push of what is needed. You know, and a little bit, like I said, never taken for granted. I'd say appreciate what you have all the time. Grass is not greener. And, you know, not, I, I suppose, I think I brought one horse in the past that I probably regret, which okay. wasn't cheap. And I had a dream of him taking me down a journey, which he never did. So that would be a regret. And... I mean, I'm the kind of person that's quite positive. I don't like to have too many regrets. So I would just say definitely never take anything for granted. That would be my biggest sort of bit of advice, really. It's kind of good advice, even if you're not in the whole world, really. It's just good life advice, isn't it? Just yeah, oh, definitely. Um, so do you, do you have sort of something that you draw on to kind of give yourself inspiration do you have like a favorite quote or is there a favorite movie or a song that kind of when things get tough you sort of rely on that to kind of bring you up well i'd very much sort of say my little bottle motto would be remember we i'm living my dream so even on those tougher days yeah. this is what i dreamt of as a child be thankful that i've got to where i have and I'm allowed to live my dream as such. You know, there's quite a lot of people out there that maybe dream of doing what I do, but for whatever reasons can't do it. So that would be my biggest sort of, sort of positive sort of speech to myself, I suppose. And then, I don't know really, just keep dedicated, like don't give up. Yeah. And, um, that's about it really yeah okay that's great um what about like is there someone whose career really inspires you when you think about them gosh every top rider out there <laughs> no <laughs> um i'm very inspired by janelle and tim price i just think their setup's phenomenal having been and helped them they are the most laid back loveliest couple and then you know I mean, God, you've got to mention Laura Collett having just one po. I mean, what what an achievement on a horse that she's also produced. And she has, hasn't had it easy, easy by any means. She had quite a nasty accident a few years ago. And, I mean, I suppose anybody at the top of their game becomes an inspiration in this game because we're all pushing to get there. So anyone that's making it, like, or made it, or is at the top of the game 
yeah, is it becomes an inspiration. But you know, it's also an amazing because it's a sport that we all get. We're all very close as well. You know, it's not everyone tries to help one another, even though we're all competing against one another. And you know, and like I say, it's just you have bad days and you have good days, and it's taking the good and trying to work out why the bad were bad. Yeah. But right yeah. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, lots of successful people have really good habits. You know, they, they get into habits that are effective and, and good at, you know, managing their time and, and their energy and all that sort of stuff. What sort of habits have you nurtured in yourself that you think have really benefited your career? Definitely got to be my work ethic. Anybody that knows me would just know that if you told me to, I've got to work 18 hours today, I'd go, okay. Um, and I'd say that's probably the biggest work ethic and dedication. And for a long time, I thought, gosh, is this ever going to pay off? But like I mentioned earlier, a couple of years ago, I started to get the ride on, you know, and get some seriously nice, good owners who have been so supportive. And I think it's just my hard work which has put me in a position position to be able to ride and have those lovely horses. So I definitely say it's work ethic, you know, like I'm all first out in the, on the yard in the mornings and sort of last outside. I mean, if someone told me we were taking the horses out on the lorry every day, I'd go, okay, you know, like, and I've been like that the whole way through my career. Oh, I found an old <laughs> reference from Jackie Green the other day, and it does say that, Claire's dedication and work ethic. You know, and I think that is definitely what has drawn owners in, drawn sponsors in, and enabled to be, me to be what I am now, really. Yeah, okay. So, apart from, you know, work hard, is there one thing you'd want our viewers to remember, like, where, when they're on their pathway to their chosen career? Is there sort of advice you could give? I'd say listen to others and watch. You know, I think quite often, especially when you're on your own or you're, you're just setting up on your own, it can be quite lonely. You know, if you think you might have your help on the yard, but actually when you're in that arena, if you're riding eight or nine horses a day, you'll be in the arena for, say, eight, nine hours on your own. Um, so it's very important to remember different te training techniques. And if it does start to go wrong, don't blame the horse. Try and think of why it may be going wrong. And I've never been a rider that likes lots of gadgets. So I try and keep things quite simple as well. So if it does go wrong, I'd say try and work out why it's going wrong. Don't try and fix it with a gadget, if that makes sense. Um, so I'd say, yeah, just listen to others and watch others. You know, that's the beauty now of social media. You can sit and watch training, other training techniques and tr other riders train. You know, when I first started, we didn't have that so much online support. But I used to sit and watch David Green train all the Australian riders, probably, well, as much as I could really. And it's that education which has probably set me up for life, really. Yeah. And if a horse starts to drift, you learn, start to look at why that horse is drifting down a line of fences as such. And then you learn what exercises you can do to keep that horse straight. And I think that's all just what has basically stuck with me. Yeah, that's interesting. So you actually mentioned before that you, um, you know, when you started your career, you know, social media and all that sort of wasn't as, you know, as big. And yeah. it's interesting, I think, that for anyone contemplating a career in the horse industry, social media has to be at the forefront of, of what, how they manage their public relations, doesn't it? And so how do you manage your, your sort of social media commitments? Because obviously with sponsors and things, you have commitments to them. Um, you know, is it a big part of your day or is it a big part of your life? Or is it annoying? Um, 
others would say it's a huge part of my life because I get told off for always being on my phone. Um, but I try and put out a post at least daily. Um, but as, lo as far as social media goes, it's not only the social media that you have to manage. It's say, I probably have eight or nine owners which I have to keep up to date with their horse's progress. And as much as they like to see it on social media, I also still make sure I keep a personal relationship with them and that they don't only see their horses through Facebook or Instagram. So I try and make sure that I also communicate with them on a regular basis over WhatsApp, phone calls or whatever. As far as my social media goes with sponsors, I try and make sure that I involve them in all of my posts and I might put, well, I do try and put up like the odd story saying, you know, like I might have just given a horse um, some foresight, which is an ex excellent joint supplement that I use. I'll then, you know, put it like, for instance, yesterday they sent me some new syringes. So I just put up a story of that. So it's just trying to keep everyone involved. But you also have to remember with social media, you don't want to bore people. So it's making sure that you keep people involved and and interested really so i try and put a post up at least you know it's harder during the winter months because there's oh look at a photo of me riding my pony in the school and it's pouring rain mm -hmm. um whereas in the summer when you're competing you've got lovely photos and it you know social media is amazing because people feel like they are on the journey with you as such and like for instance at the moment i've got a lovely six-year-old who I am trying to syndicate. So I have used social media to try and help promote him as a horse, hoping that that might draw people in that might be interested in the horse or people looking at social media might know people who are and would be interested. So it's an extremely good tool as we all know. And it's just making sure that you put the right things on there and keep people interested. But it is very good as well for, you know owner interaction as well i'd say and sponsor interaction what social media platforms are you on i am on uh, obviously facebook uh instagram and twitter but i don't really use twitter I couldn't tell you the last time i went on twitter but facebook and instagram yes and i my instagram and my facebook are linked i don't really have a personal account i just it's all for me i mean per, as far as personal life not much goes on other than horses so <laughs> it's um it's literally they're all linked and i they're all open so go and have a look you know and tell me what i'm doing right and wrong <laughs> so that's for, for our um, for our viewers that's claire duton eventing isn't it that's your that's your professional page i have a professional page and i actually as well i have my i think it's just claire duton which is my sort of profile as such and then obviously it's just i think it's claire duton on instagram as well brilliant yeah i'm sure well, hopefully people will check that out so uh, you sort of mentioned it before you don't really have much social life do you have any hobbies apart from horses <laughs> um i love spending time with friends absolutely love it I, I went out for dinner with the girls last night quick dinner before we locked down and I suppose in this sport, because you give so much to the sport, your friends very much become connected to what to what you do. So I, I love having a cat, girly, good girly catch up. I love going out for dinner. And quite often during the winter months, we would have, um, I'd do Sunday roasts and stuff like that and try and get a load of friends around. But unfortunately, as we're going into lockdown, oh. that's yeah that's probably not going to be so possible um yeah and I, I mean i just yeah like for instance i'm going to pick my stallion is at stud so i was going to pick him up this weekend and hopefully pop in and have dinner with a friend at, because of lockdown now we can't so my you know yeah i'm very social so i'd say that it is definitely my biggest hobby would, would be spending time with friends but as far as playing other sports and stuff i mean i just you're exhausted after a day riding. So no, I don't really do any other sports and you know, it's just fitting time to see the family and seeing friends really. Yeah. 
Okay, so just the one more question. I was going to ask you, um, what has been the biggest highlight of your career to date? Oh, gosh. I should have thought about this one, shouldn't I? Um, God, there's actually, when I look back, there are so, so many. Um, anyone that follows me, or if you are going to follow me, you might see that I ride an absolutely stunning coloured stallion. He's taken me on the most incredible journeys, or journey, and you know, we've had some serious highs, like he's jump, jumping around Gatcombe, he's jumping around some advanced classes, he was double clear this summer at Cornbury. He's just, you know, there's too many amazing memories to mention with him. And then, ah, oh, all the successes that the young horse has given me, as much as the older horses, it's amazing to be at the bigger events. I think it's just as rewarding to get the young ones out and get their first successes under your belt. I think we get so drawn in on following and getting to the top that you forget that actually producing those young horses up the levels is what makes them for the top of their career. And whether you're producing them to sell or producing them for yourself to ride, I think every single little result is almost more rewarding because it just shows that the hard work and also that your training program is working. Um, so I'd probably say crossing the line at Gatcombe because that was always my biggest dream. And then I've got a lovely six year old who was actually third after dressage out of about 120 horses in his first two star this summer and then jumped a lovely clear round and unfortunately I lost balance and came off in cross country but he's a really exciting young horse and that's the one I said I was trying to syndicate he's taken me again on an amazing journey you know he then went one at more, more or two weeks after that he jumped the six-year-olds at Hickstead this summer to which I thought oh my gosh this is massive he's just a lovely horse so he's taken me on a journey and like I said all the young horses just there's so many good memories that you can't mention them all because there are just too many and like I said it that's the amazing thing about this this career job sport you know you're always there's all there is always rewards because even on a bad day something would have gone right and that's what you do have to remember like never beat yourself up over something that's gone wrong because a you can probably fix it and b just work out why it's gone wrong because you know like i read a thing in horse and hound last night that andrew nicholson had written about you know don't be too afraid of a horse's record they're all entitled to make mistakes and so are we i think people get so hooked up on horses records got to jump clear rounds got to jump clear rounds got to jump clear rounds yes but even the professionals don't do that all the time you know horses do make mistakes we are only human we, we make mistakes it's coming away from that mistake and working out and evaluating it and work and then you know moving on from it and that's just part of learning and i think you know that's probably finishing on some more advice <laughs> that would be my biggest sort of bit of advice don't beat yourself up and especially you know, it has to be mentioned, especially here in the UK. I don't know what it's like in Australia, but, you know, it's worrying times for everyone going into lockdown and mental health is a huge thing over here at the moment. And it's just making sure everyone keeps focused. And remember as well, even on a bad day, there's always people out there. And I feel very honoured that you guys have asked me to do this. So if any of you that have listened to this um, interview want have any questions, just feel free to throw a message at me and I'll try and answer your questions, you know, like it, because I think it's so important. I remember when I was growing up, I wanted to ask people questions and you don't know who to ask. And you don't feel like you can go to the top professionals because they're too busy or blah, blah, blah. But, you know, especially during the winter months, I'll talk to anyone. <laughs> uh, Claire, thank you so much for um, spending some time with us today and sharing such an amazing story and um
good luck living through the next lot of lockdown and um, <laughs> and we hope to see you out competing on the flip side. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Thank you very much.